Jason Harper, a well-liked high school teacher, loyal husband, and devoted family man. Shot dead in the master bedroom of the family's Southern California home. And there's no question who did it. His wife, Julie. I heard a loud noise and felt my hand jerk. But there are other questions, and the answers will help a jury decide her fate. Did Julie pull the trigger on purpose, or was this an accident? What did she do after the blood was shed? And what on earth did she tell her kids, who were downstairs when that bullet went barreling through their dad? The home of Jason and Julie Harper in the San Diego bedroom community of Carlsbad, where she's a Harvard alum turned stay-at-home mom. And he teaches math and coaches volleyball at the local high school. The Harpers, both 39, have been married for nearly 11 years, many of them happily. And they are loving parents to three young children. But over the past few years, their marriage has deteriorated Things had gotten very bad between Jason and my sister, and it looked like they might be headed towards a divorce. Amy Kilpeck says her older sister Julie had confided in her about her marital problems. Jason had become very, very angry, was constantly yelling at her, would grab her by her wrists and twist them. But Julie claims Jason's abuse reached a deadly new level one morning during a fierce argument in their bedroom. He was yelling all of these things and screaming them. I don't want to enable your horrible money ways and your poor credit score and everything else. I don't want to enable that. Grabbed me by the arms, began shaking me forcefully. Julie says she feared for her life. As he was coming toward me, he said, I'm going to kill you, you And moments later, Jason is lying dead on the floor from a shot through his rib cage. But instead of calling 911, Julie hides his body under clothes lying around the bedroom, gathers up the kids who were watching TV downstairs, and takes refuge with her father. At this point, had you tried to call 911 or call paramedics or call the police? No. It's another 16 hours before Julie turns herself in and is charged with first degree murder after police can find no sign of bruises or injuries on her body to support her claim of self defense. Nor can police find the murder weapon, a Derringer 38 Special. Julie says she buried but can't remember where. Did she say anything about a gun? I don't believe so. Did she say anything about a murder weapon? I don't believe so. The prosecution alleges Julie had planned to kill her husband Jason and run, presenting surveillance shots of her withdrawing large amounts of money from the bank just before she shot him dead. She disposed of the murder weapon and she assembled a getaway bag stuffed with a different gun, her passport, $39,000 in cash, and Jason Harper's last will and testament. But the defense argues that getaway bag is what abused wives are advised to assemble should they have to flee in an emergency. Julie also claims Jason had raped her some 30 times during their marriage. It's not an event where Julie Harper committed a murder. It's not an event where she committed a manslaughter. As a person, she has rights, and that is the reason why this killing happened. When she is asked why she didn't report the abuse, Julie alludes to the notorious case of football star Ray Rice beating up his fiance in an Atlantic City elevator. She was only fortunate that there was some elevator video of him. Julie says she didn't think anyone would believe her. As for her rape allegations, the prosecution says Julie contradicts herself in a private journal where she had written about wanting more sex with her husband, quote, improve sex life, more foreplay, last longer, more variety. So if I'm understanding your testimony correctly, 
rapes were going on at this time, but you're having a conversation with him about interest in sex in your marriage. Is that correct? Yes. Julie also says she never meant to kill her husband, that she pulled the trigger by accident as Jason was coming toward her in a rage. But the prosecution gets the jury to dry fire a 38 Derringer, like the one used to shoot Jason, to prove the trigger was too hard to pull by accident. The prosecution also produces forensic diagrams of the bullet trajectory, showing that Jason was shot in the back, not as he was approaching her, like Julie claimed. And Jason's mother, Lena Harper, says she feared Jason was in danger from Julie, who prosecutors say had become addicted to prescription narcotics she took for an autoimmune condition. I said, are you safe? Something just didn't feel right. The very next morning, her son was dead. I screamed and said, it's so final. She, she, she couldn't have, she couldn't have. It, it's just too final. Julie Harper stood trial, not just once, but twice, for the murder of her husband, Jason. As he was coming toward me, he said, I'm gonna kill you, you Julie claims she grabbed a gun to warn off her husband during a violent argument in the master bedroom of their suburban San Diego home. He was yelling all of these things and screaming them, grabbed me by the arms, began shaking me forcefully. Julie says she didn't mean to shoot Jason, that the gun went off accidentally, leaving him lying dead on the floor. I heard a loud noise and felt my hand jerk. At her first trial, a jury finds Julie not guilty of first degree murder, but is deadlocked on lesser charges, and a judge declares a mistrial. Now Julie sits anxiously in court at her retrial as a second jury is about to deliver its verdict. We the jury in the above entitled cause find the defendant, Julie Harper, guilty of the crime of murder in the second degree. A weeping Julie Harper is handcuffed and led away to likely spend the rest of her life behind bars. It seemed as if she recognized that she really was uh, going to be going to state prison and uh, she knew that this moment of truth has finally come. From stay-at-home mom to jailhouse Julie, we're about to interview California convict Julie Harper. Julie has more to say about this tragic case, and I have some unanswered questions to ask her at this detention center where she's being held while awaiting sentencing. Now, we are about to get Julie's side of her story in her own words. Hi, Julie. How you doing? Well, I've been better, obviously. Speaking to me on a phone through jailhouse glass, Julie still insists she's innocent. When people call you a murderer, you say what to that? It's very difficult because I know what the truth is. I know what happened. I feel like God knows what happened. And I know that I'm not a murderer. But if Julie did indeed accidentally shoot her husband in self-defense, why did she flee their home with their three kids? Why didn't you call 911? Well, um, unfortunately, my husband passed incredibly quickly. And I think to me, the biggest fear in my mind became my children and getting them somewhere safe that you know, they could be with family for whatever period of time it took to deal with things. But I also just didn't want them to have to, you know, visually see anything. I didn't want them to have those kind of um, nightmares or visions in their head for, for the rest of their life. Do you regret that gun going off? Um, I definitely wish that this whole situation had never happened. That's, that's for sure. There's no question in my mind. But, you know, I go over it in my mind, and, and sometimes I just, um, I don't know what could have been done different. Where's the weapon? Where's the gun right now, Julie? I don't know, unfortunately. 
Julie still insists she can't remember where she buried it. But San Diego Deputy DA Keith Watanabe doesn't believe her. Only Julie Harper knows exactly where the murder weapon is. She knows where she disposed of it, and she knows where it is right now. Uh, but we do know that her story about how she got rid of the weapon is not true. Watanabe claimed during the trial, Julie had planned to murder her husband, perhaps to be with another man she'd been seen with after her husband's shooting. But what about an extramarital relationship? What about a boyfriend? Can you talk about whether that's true or not? No, that's completely false. I, um, I have many good friends, and um, the person that they were referring to was someone that is a very dear, close friend of mine. But I was completely faithful to my husband during our entire marriage. I never cheated on him at any time. Julie shocked everyone when she became pregnant with her fourth child just months before her second trial was to begin and forcing it to be rescheduled. Who is the father of that child? It's an anonymous donor. Anonymous donor. You wanted to bring another child into the world during all this, why? Well, I gotta say, um, and, and of course, you know, this is maybe a naive belief, but from day one, I always believed in my innocence because I know what happened, I know what my husband did, and I was believing at that point still in our justice system that I am innocent, the right outcome would come out, and so I believed that I would be there to raise my daughter and be there for her and be able to love her and give her love and to, to try to pick up the pieces of my life. Then there are her other three children, now left without a father or a mother. They have publicly said that they don't like you. They don't like what happened. They're hurt. The hard part for me is it's, it's, it's not just about me. It's not about how it makes me feel. What makes me most sad or hurt about it is just knowing the changes that have happened in their lives. I want them to know that you know, that I'm innocent of anything criminal. I am innocent of any criminal wrongdoing, and I shouldn't be in here. And with that, Julie Harper gives a wave, whispers, God bless you, and our interview ends. And there she is right now, off back to her cell, waiting to find out how long she will spend locked up behind bars. And since my interview, Julie has found out that sentence. She will spend 40 years to life in prison. The judge at her sentencing hearing calling Harper a danger to society. Your husband got the death sentence. Her 10-year-old daughter wrote a letter to the court in which she vowed to never call Harper mom again.